Right, we're out today for our second of the Aberdeen trails. We're in Old Aberdeen. Now, Old Aberdeen is a hidden gem. Uniquely in Scotland, you can visit a medieval cathedral, a late medieval bridge, and a 15th century college, and the fifth oldest university in the world, all in one place. Now, this was originally an independent town from Aberdeen from 1499 to 1891 and it's divided into three distinct areas. The oldest area around St. Macher Cathedral, known as the Chandry, and this was developed in the 12th and 13th centuries. Next, we have the merchant area around the townhouse, and this was developed in 1489, when it became a borough of Barney by a grant of a charter from King James IV. And third, the academic part, and this was developed after the foundation of King's College which we're sitting in just now and there's a delivery behind us, but never mind, we'll crack on. So we've been around a couple of the, the stopping points already, which we'll show you in a minute. And where are we going now? We're off for a cup of tea and uh, something to eat because we're a bit fried. Because unusual for Aberdeen, the weather is glorious. So, catch you soon. Is it Chanary or Chanary? I've just got a row. Apparently I said it the wrong way around, but she's going to check it later on and tell me that I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care either. So this is St Margaret's Chapel and Convent. So Dr John Masson Neal was the founder of the Society of St Margaret at East Grimstead in Sussex. He was also the rector at St John's Episcopal Church. He and the Episcopalian Reverend John Comper, Father Comper, they decided that they needed a community to tend for the poor and sick. So a convent established they purchased some property and it was consecrated in 1892. Now in 2003, Father Comper was recognised as Hero of the Faith. Which is... So here's the spittle. You come down St Peter's Gate and this used to be the main entrance to the graveyard. And above it is a coat of arms and Latin motto of Sir Kenneth Moyer. He was a Scottish knight and crusader from the 1300s. And the motto reads, not for themselves, but for all. So this is St Peter's Gate Cemetery and this is the site of St Peter's Hospital which the spittle takes its name from. Now the hospice was for infirm brethren, elderly priests and it was founded between 1172 and 1179. Now the hospice stood in the southwest corner of the old part of today's St Peter's Cemetery and it functioned until at least 1541. Now this place is a neo-gothic mausoleum, it was built circa 1849. Prickly weeds, I love weeds. That's good because you've got plenty at home. I have no idea. Oh, there's more apples. That's definitely apples. I think the other ones are pears. Gosh, there's lots of fruits. Are they plums of green gauges? No idea. Well, look at, look at that little clump there. I don't know if that's pears or green gauges. No idea. It's like a skate park. Sunnybank Park is a community park run entirely by local volunteers. 
We welcome your help in keeping the park clean, safe and friendly. So this is Fir Hill Well. Now waters were discovered here in 1721 and they were said to be good for the health. The well was built in 1798. Now Fir Hill Road was created for access and the well stood at its corner but it was moved in 1937 for a street that was never built. So this is a community park and was established in 2011 and it is run by a charity, Friends of Sunnybank Park and it includes a play park, outdoor gym, sports area, street art zone, orchards and allotments. So we've just left the park, we're back onto Sunnybank Road and then down onto the spittal. That's a cracking wee park, never even knew it existed. So we're actually on College Bounds. So here's Orchard Walk. Now round about this area is where the Snow Kirk used to be. This was founded as a parish church when Old Aberdeen became a borough of Barony. Now the parish boundaries date from 1498, but it was out of use at the time of the Protestant Reformation in 1560. But burials continued, which caused a problem for the Protestant authorities. Now, there is a graveyard around here somewhere, but I've no idea where. And one of the flat graves is a marker for Gilbert Menzies. He was a 17th century member of a very powerful local Catholic family. There you go. So we're just coming up to the Powys Gates. Now here we've got the Powys Gates. So you'll see that the gates are topped by Turkish style minarets and they were erected by John Leslie of Powys in 1833 to 34. Powys House was built by John's father, Hugh Leslie of Powys in 1802. They're topped by a crescent, the emblem of the Fraser family, who were the previous owners. Now this is a commemorative plaque installed in 2022 to acknowledge that the gateway was part funded by government compensation following the 1833 abolishment of slavery and of course the former enslaved people received nothing. Nothing changes eh? So this is King's College and when it was founded this was Scotland's third university. With the exception of the chapel there, little remains of the first buildings, with the exception of the 1525 round tower which I think is through here on the right hand side. The Cromwell Tower of 1661, built to contain 24 bedrooms, a cloakroom, a billiard room to accommodate the growing number of students. Now I think the round tower is behind that building there, later in the front. The quad buildings here were replaced in the 1870s. And New King's was completed in 1913. The crown tower, you can see there, it's got a closed crown. And apparently that represents that, th that the authority is complete, no higher power. AKA the Holy Roman Emperor. An open crown admits a higher authority. Now the original crown blew down in the storm of 1633. 
and this used to be a separate university but both colleges, King's and Marshall, which is in Central Aberdeen, amalgamated in 1861. So this is Bishop Elphinstone, now he was a key force in the creation of King's College and the erection of Old Aberdeen into a borough of Barony. He was born probably in Glasgow in 1431, an illegitimate son of a canon of Glasgow and he was brought up, brought up in his father's household near Glasgow Cathedral. He was ordained in 1455 and he graduated University of Glasgow 1457 and he was appointed Bishop of Aberdeen on the 19th of March, 1483. So Bishop Elphiston was active during the reign of James III and he was a senior appeal judge, auditor of the Exchequer and a member of the King's Council and from 1488, Chancellor. The start of the reign of James IV, he was a brief period out of favour but he later rose to the Keeper of the Privy Seal in 1492. Early 1514 he was nominated as Archbishop of St Andrews but died shortly afterwards in Edinburgh on the 25th of October 1514. Also responsible for organising and partly funding the building of the Bridge of Dee and a series of building works at St Macher's Cathedral. So this monument to him sits between King's College Chapel and the High Street and the bronze and marble sculpture was created by Harry Wilson. It was too large for its original site within King's Chapel and it was moved to its current position in 1946. Now here's your bus stop for cruise shuttle bus, CS1. To right across the road for King's College. See so here we've got a gateway with three coat of arms. It's got the Royal Arms of Scotland, the middle one is the Bishop of Elphinstone, the bottom one is the University of Aberdeen, and its Latin motto, well, I've not even attempted to say it in Latin, but it means the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So this is New Kings. I used to hear some of my lectures here, in New Kings too. And this was built in 1912. It was designed by Alexander Marshall Mackenzie and much of the funding came from Andrew Carnegie who was the rector at the time. So here's Elphinstone Hall built in 1930 and designed by A. Marshall Mackenzie and son. Colonnaded cloister forms the east side and an open quadrangle around King's Lawn. This is King's Lawn here. Now I'm sure I read a book yonks ago called The Crown and the Gown and I'm sure that King's Lawn is where the first, was it the Bishop Elphinstone's house or something was on that lawn? Don't quote me on that one. Now this is Youth with Split Apple. It's a bronze designed by Kenny Hunter in 2005 and he was born in Edinburgh, 1962. The student reclines among us, sharing our space, holding an apple, a traditional symbol of intellectual awakening. It's split in two, which suggests the dualistic nature of knowledge, good and bad. So this work questions the assumption that knowledge is acquired through actions. Instead, suggests that openness and contemplation play their part 
and that the aim of life is not to change the world, but to understand it. Now this is Scott Brown Quadrangle. It's not named after the guy who used to play for Aberdeen. I think he did play for another Scotland team, but I can't remember which one. Maybe Phil will keep us right. So in the centre, we've got a bronze, 2007. This is called Case. And this was designed by Yorkshire-born Stephen Dilworth, who studied sculpture at Maidstone College of Art. The case forms the centrepiece of Scott Brown Quadrangle and commemorates Sir William and his son Ronald Scott Brown, both former members of the University Court. Right, we've just had our lunch at Kilau. Kilau Coffee? And we're walking through Tom Place. Number six is for sale if you're interested. This one here. Evolutionary Loop 517. This six metre bronze sculpture was created by Ar artist Nasser Azam and gifted to the university by Dr. John Sibright. He was a London-based artist inspired by the Sir Duncan Rice Library when working on his masterpiece. He explained, Evolutionary Loop 517 to me reflects the visually striking interior design of the library. So I suppose you would have to go inside aye. to... Well, maybe, aye, we will. Okay, yes. good plan. <coughs> so this building is the Sir Duncan Rice Library. It was officially opened on the 24th of September 2012 by Queen Elizabeth and the building is open to the public and includes the Hardback Cafe. It was designed by Danish architects Schmidt Hammer Lassen, conceived to mark the ice and light of the north. The concept to provide a meeting place and a cultural centre for the university and the wider Aberdeen community. It comprises of 22,000 tonnes of concrete, 2,200 tonnes of steel, 760 glass panels and 4,700 lights and also 24 kilometres of shelving. So this sculpture is water lines and it is based on the form of the iconic Aberdeen fast sailing ship Thermopylae, which was built by Walter Hood and Co, launched 1868 and considered to be the fastest sailing ship ever constructed. The two shaped columns, 200 millimeters apart, are constructed from Kilkenny blue limestone. And it was by Fife based artist Marianne Levin and Will McLean. Oh, McLean was awarded an honorary Doctor of Letters in 2009. So this is 81 High Street, townhouse of the family of McLean of Call. And the foundation stone was laid in 1771. Hugh McLean was chief magistrate in Old Aberdeen in the late 18th century and one of the actions taken under him was the construction of the fine townhouse that we see today in Old Aberdeen. That's it there. Now we've got Grant's place and Wright's and Cooper's Place. Now Wright's and Cooper's Place is named after one of the six incorporated trades of Old Aberdeen, the woodworkers and barrel makers. The row of houses was built in the 19th century and Grant's Place dates from the 18th century. It was restored, they were restored in 1965 and financed by the McRobert Trust. 
And the same year, Robert Hurd and Partners, the architecture restored Grant's place, also created the McRobert Memorial Garden at the end of Wright St Cooper's Place. So this garden commemorates Lady McRoberts, widow of Sir Alexander McRobert, Baronet. Now her sons, Sir Alistair, he died flying an airplane in 1938. The second son was RAF Flight Lieutenant Sir Roderick, and he died he died over Mosul in Iraq in May 1941. And the third son, Sir Ian, RAF pilot officer, he died over the North Sea on the 30th of June 1941. On the 10th of October 1941, uh, Lady McRobert donated a short, sterling four-engine bomber to the RAF, and it was called McRobert's Reply. So we're back onto the high street. It used to be the Bank of Scotland. And here we've got the St Macher Bar next to the bookshop. Now when I was studying here in late 90, 1990s, I was in there with one of my pals, like David Lip. We were standing in a beer. And he said to me, yeah, there's a drunk man staring at you in the corner and I'm going, oh god, so I just kept my back turned and he's going, oh god, he's coming out to you so he tapped me in the shoulder, it turned out it was my Uncle Mike they'd sent him on a job doing an old Aberdeen thinking there was no any pubs close by but uh, Mike knew different now we're coming up here, this is the, the old townhouse and the market cross when Old Aberdeen became a borough of Barony in the late 15th century, it was required to have a Merkit Cross. The fragments that survive were dated to the about 1540s. Now it was defaced at the time of the Reformation in 1560, and the, and the Council of Old Aberdeen sold the cross in 1788-89, and fragments resurfaced in 1841 in a smithy in Old Aberdeen. The 1951 fragment was erected on top of a shaft in front of St Mary's Church in the High Street and it was transferred here back to its current and original location in 1993. So behind the Market Cross is the, the old townhouse. Now this is a Georgian building designed by George Jaffrey, 1788 and originally incorporated a grammar school, an English school and a hall used by different societies and incorporated trades of Old Aberdeen. It was part funded by the Masons, who used to retain the attic to themselves. The Lodge of Old Aberdeen, number 164, used to meet up there. They now meet around the corner. So this building replaced the earlier townhouse, which was completed in 1703. And the panel above the door is older than the current building, and it may be from the original townhouse. It's got the old Aberdeen arms and the borough motto, by harmony, small things increase. Fun fact, the image of this building is the logo for the Architectural Heritage Society of Scotland. And I'll leave a link showing that in the description below. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Oh God. So does that mean you were right? <laughs> what did I call it? Chanery. And what is it then? Chanery. Okay. It's made our day. <laughs> this is Bead House. Now this townhouse was built in 1676 for Bailey William Logan and his wife Jean Moyer. 1789 it became a bead or an arms house when Bishop Dunbar's Hospital by St. Marker's Cathedral closed and moved here and it was a hospice or hostel for poor men. Now the bead house lasted until the late 1800s before again becoming a private property. Now this is not on the University Trail or the Old Aberdeen Trail sorry but this is a wee Brucey bonus. This is the University's Zoology Building and this was actually used is one of the filming locations for the film Tetris. 
So they were looking for somewhere to represent 1970s Russia. And they came to Aberdeen. Brutalistar. <laughs> Right, we're back on script after that wee Brucey bonus at the filming location. And Carl's got to tell us what this place is called. The Channonry. There you go, it's exactly what I said. You did not you said Channonry. <laughs> you've, you've even written it in your wee book, Channonry. Listen. <laughs> so the name of this place derives its name from it once hoped being the home of the canons or the clergy of St. Marker's Cathedral. College of Canons were incorporated as early as 1240 and the manses were all named after areas in the diocese. You've got Old Rain, Clat, etc. In the 17th century, Marcus of Huntley acquired Belhelvi and Daviet manses and incorporated them into one. And today that's called Channery Lodge and it's the home of the university's principal. So this is into the Crookshack Botanical Gardens. Oh no. So this is the Crookshank Botanical Gardens. In part stands in what was Clooney Clooney's Garden. And it was formed in the early 17th century. Buildings incorporate the old Channonry House Gymnasium School. Established by deed of trust on the 26th of April 1898 on a land bequeathed by Miss Anne Cruikshank to commemorate her brother Dr. Alexander Cruikshank. So the gardens are behind the zoology building, I showed you a minute ago. And they were laid down for teaching and study of botany as pure science and as applied to the arts and industries and for furtherance of university interests and the public good. Now the gardens include over 2,500 plant varieties. So here's the back of the zoology building. And Here's the Sir Duncan Rice Library in the background, and that's the central refectory there. And this is the first time I've ever been in this garden. He lost. Oh, there's a man sunbathing with just the shorts on, so quite tiny. Oh. So this is number nine Chandlery. It's the old Mitchell Hospital, and it was built in 1801. And the founder and endower was David Mitchell, LLD, of Holloway Down in the county of Essex, England. And it was to be used for lodging, clothing, and maintaining five widows and five unmarried daughters of the Burgesses of Old Aberdeen. In 1924, the building was converted into individual cottages. So now we're coming up to St. Macher Cathedral. It was named after the legendary disciple of Columba. Now the church did not become a cathedral until the 1100s, when the seat of the bishop was transferred from Mortlich, near Dufton. Now it took a while to build. It started with Bishop Cheen, 1282 to 1328. The rebuilding was interrupted by the War of Independence. Bishop Kinnemund, 1355-80, he restarted it. Now the heraldic ceiling was installed by Bishop Dunbar, 1518-32, and after the Reformation of 1560, it became a parish church.
this star on the, the wall at the East Gateway to St. Marker's Cathedral uh, marks the burial place of Sir William Wallace's arm. So this is Blenheim's Lodge. It was built by Sir Robert Keith of Benham, a younger brother of the Earl Marshall, founded a Marshall College. Now he bought some land and built the house in 1588. In the 1965, the original site at the Nether Kirkgate was getting redeveloped, so they moved the house here. Uh, there's a plaque in the Nether Kirkgate that marks the original location. It's a fortified townhouse. And the carved figure that you see inside there is actually thought to be Robert Keith. In 18th century, it was actually named the Wallace Tower, but I think it's him. And the name derives from Well House Tower in 1768 that was owned by John Niven, a snuff and tobacco merchant. And in 1895, it was owned by James Perry, spirit dealer, and he turned it into the Wallace Tower Pub. Now, this is the Tilly Drawn Moat, or it's thought to be a moat, a type of castle mound introduced into Scotland in the 12th century, topped off by a wooden fortification. Archaeological investigation revealed it was far older though, maybe a defensive site in the 2nd century, and may even have origins as a prehistoric burial mound or a burial cairn. Now we're walking through Seaton Park. Well, Seaton Park's got its own trail and guide, so we'll do that one later on. Uh, now this was a central part of Seaton Estate, where the house burnt down in 1963. There's a fountain at the end of this bit here, which marks where the, the situation of the old house. The park was bought by Aberdeenshire. No, <laughs> wasn't it? The park was bought by Aberdeen City Council in 1947 by using their Common Good Fund. And in the 50s, the format changed and the gardens were laid out. There was a play area established in 1974, and it won the first Playground of the Year award. Now, seating has nothing to do with the sea. Translation comes from Gaelic meaning. Peaceful retreat. So here's the fountain that marks the original situation of the Seaton Estate House that burnt down in 1963. So it's a Briga Balgauni. Local legend has it, it was started by Bishop Henry Cheen and completed by Robert the Bruce. It's one of the oldest bridges in Scotland. Completed by Robert the Bruce. Oh, that's what it says in the leaflet. He didn't build a bridge. He wasn't a bridge builder. It Look. wasn't completed by Robert the Bruce. It says in the thing, completed by Robert the Bruce. That's what it says in the leaflet. Was he a I'm sure, mason? I'm sure Bishop, Bl Bishop Bloody Jean didn't it? Oh, so like... Um, like Errol Marshall didn't build Marshall commissioned, College. Commissioned. Yeah, it started. Not completed, commissioned. That's what it's started by the uh, yeah, bishop and, and completed. Then re, re, uh -huh, okay. Right. So, okay. You've waited until the last one to put your tipping sort in. No, no, I just wanted to check. Is this really. <laughs> These are like you, Paul. They're really grippy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be, I'm retired. <laughs> that completes the Old Aberdeen Trail. Thank you if anybody's managed to stomach it and last this long, which I doubt very much. But if you have, give us a thumbs up, a like, and please subscribe, it's free. Carol? And also shout out to the Aussie wifey we met and uh, spoke to several times on our little trip through Old Aberdeen. Um, if you're watching, she gave us this by the way, and uh, if you're watching, drop us a wee message so that we know you got home safe. <laughs>